Hey everybody, welcome to my stamping room. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made this card right here. Um, I did try a new technique with this one. It was the first time, actually the second time I've tried this technique and I loved it so much the first time I did it that this was the first card I have made of my own that I used this technique. And it's pretty fun and it's very simple actually and it gives you a fantastic um, look to the card and you can see that you can do it too. So let's get started. I'm going to have the measurements for everything that I've cut on the side over there somewhere and uh, so that will tell you how large I've cut my pieces. Um, you can of course cut them to whatever size you like but but this will give you an idea of what size I used to make my card and what you're going to need obviously you're going to need a card base so I have cut my card base out of garden green. You're going to need a mat um, which would be this portion right here. I have cut that out of pear pizzazz and I went ahead and embossed it and I'll talk about that in a minute but I, for time's sake I did it already. Um, you're going to need a couple pieces of scratch paper and that's going to be not only for the turtles that you're going to be cutting out but also for the sentiment portion as well. Um, this is what I'm going to be doing my turtles on. You're also going to need a mat for um, your main panel, which will, you'll need a piece of Whisper White for your main panel and your mat will be in garden green. Okay, so there's not a lot of pieces that you'll need for your main card itself. And then as far as supplies, um, I'm going to be using garden green, pear pizzazz, pool party, and crumb cake. And the crumb cake is going to be for the turtle's bodies. And you're just going to need um, a couple stamps. Um, this one comes from the Wetlands set, and it's the sentiment that says "Happy Birthday." The sea turtle comes from the uh, land, from land to sea set, and the I believe it's fan coral. That's what I call it, fan coral, is from the By the Tide. So there's there's actually three sets being utilized here, um, but they actually go together quite nicely. So to begin, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to work on the background first. And this is going to show you the technique of how I did this. And it's really pretty simple and it gives it kind of a mottled and um, variegated look as far as the colors are concerned. So we're going to start with our main panel, our Whisper White, and the measurements for that again will be on the side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take two light colors because we don't want it too, too dark because, you know, in the upper part of the ocean, it's there's a little more light coming through. So let's go ahead and open those up. And then we're also going to want some sponges. And um, I've just done mine like this so that this says light green, that says dark blue, so I can use them for different, different things. Okay. All right, so first thing you want to do is you want to um, ink up your sponge. And it looks like there's quite a bit of ink on there. There sure is. So I'm just going to kind of lightly start to pounce the color in one area and then again in another area. And then maybe a third or a fourth. You really just want to kind of go all around but not cover the whole thing. And then you're going to want to take some of that ink off of there and then just kind of swirl it around really lightly. Just do a very light touch. You don't want too much and you don't want to do it too, too hard. So we're swirling and we're kind of spreading the ink around a little bit. And you, you don't want it to be in an exact circle. You want it to kind of be a little a little bit all over the place. Okay? And I know it looks funny. It kind of looks like polka dots. I think I'll put a little bit more here. Okay, and on this corner and here, just kind of filling in. So if you can see that, it's kind of what it looks like now. Now that was done with um, my pool party and now I'm going into my pear pizzazz and I'm taking my different sponge and inking that up. Again, kind of making sure I don't have too much ink on there. And then you're going to kind of go in between, in between uh, where you have your other color, your first color. You're just going to kind of want to spread some ink, not too much, and then 
take your sponge and swirl it around. And you're going to want to work on that for a few minutes, but it's really worth the effort once you get it done. And what you're doing is you're blending the colors together. You're leaving some lighter spots, you're leaving some darker spots. But you're just blending really well all over to the edges. And then I'm using my blue to kind of put it all together. I think I had more blue on my first one. Pool party. So we're using the pool party to kind of blend the two colors together and soften the edges so there's not such a definite uh, contrast between the colors and it's going to kind of give you a very pretty soft watercolory type look and then you know just kind of smooth it out okay isn't that pretty look at that all right now from here, what we want to do is we want to give it, like I said, that, that model look. Actually, before we do that, um, the last time I stamped it after I did the fun little technique, but actually you should probably stamp it beforehand. Okay. For my fan coral, I've decided I'm going to try um, early espresso. I used black in my original, but I'm going to go ahead and use early espresso in this one, see how it turns out. All right, so we're going to want to ink this up, stamp slightly off the panel on this side so it looks like that oh the espresso looks fantastic I think I like that better okay and ink it up again stamp on the opposite side like so oh, see like that okay and then with what's left what we're gonna do you are gonna want to ink it up again and then you're gonna want to stamp off which means ink it stamp on a scratch piece of paper Okay, and then right in the middle. And then that's going to give you a kind of layered look, kind of a little bit further away look. You can see that. Okay, and then you set that aside. Um, now comes the fun part. So what you want to do with this is now that you have this beautiful piece here, and you might want to have a napkin or a paper towel or tissue or something handy. And what I do is, is you, you get water of some sort. You can either have it in a dish or um, however you want to do it. But I have a little spray bottle that I use. And what I do is I usually just spray it into my hand, which I'm going to do off screen. And then you take it and you flick droplets onto your backing. And you want to give it a couple seconds to work. And what it's going to do is it's going to start giving like a bubble effect or um, um, maybe you can watch it while it's working. It's, it's slowly starting to kind of lift and move the ink as we're sitting here. Well, there's quite a bit on this one, so it's really going to look bubbly. And if you have too much, if you think you have too much, again, just take your napkin or your paper towel and you just blot it. Just be very careful, but you blot it. And it really made my fan coral smear, but maybe that'll add to the effect. You know, each one's different. That's what makes them unique and lovely and wonderful. So um, so now you're going to want to give this a few minutes to dry. Uh, you don't, and, and while it's drying, you can work on the rest of your cards. So at this point, what I would do is I would stamp my turtles. And I'm stamping them in our wonderful new archival basic black, which I love. Love, love. So you stamp two of them, two little sea turtles. Okay. Okay. You can either color them after you've cut them out or you can color them before. And I do prefer to color them before. Um, I don't know, I just find it easier to handle the paper 
when I'm coloring them. I'm going to color them with my blender pen and I'm going to start with my crumb cake and um, color their bodies. Now what I do when I color is wherever I want the shadows to be, the darker parts to be, that's since I'm picking up my ink, that's where I want to color first. So wherever the shadows would be, the darker spots. Okay, so underneath the shell, by the body, up along the head, along the feet, little flippers. He's cute. What should we name him? Tommy? Tommy Turtle? Okay, we'll go with Tommy. Underneath his mouth, give him a little smile. Okay. You can also mix the colors, which is kind of fun. Um, with him, um, you know, obviously reptiles have kind of a greenish brown skin, so I'm also going into my pair of pizzazz, kind of going over the same thing. You just kind of fill him in. Fill in his body, fill in his flippers. And I think at this point I'll fast forward um, to where they're done and then I'm going to cut them out. I'm going to cut them and when I do cut them, I'm going to cut them right right against um, the out the outline so that, that there's no white space. And I'll show you what I mean when I show you this card. You can see that they're cut right along the edge and there's no white space on the outside. Well, I did want to make a super quick mention here um, that when I do... Um, well, I decided since there's two turtles, this one's Tommy and this one's Tina, so now we have Tina in the mix here. But um, when I was coloring his shell, I just wanted to kind of give you an idea. I'm actually mixing the colors to do this because I want highlight along the top. And, um, you know, the, the, the shell is going to be kind of a greenish, but you, when you highlight a green, the yellow tends to stand out. So what we're going to want to do is mix the colors um, for the top. And I'm doing a uh, pair of pizzazz, a little bit of daffodil delight. I probably should have done that the other way, but you can see how it's kind of making a yellowish green. And then we're going to want to highlight the top with the yellow and green mixture, like so. And if you want it a little lighter, you can add more yellow. Okay. And then you're just going to start blending in the greens. And I'm doing pear pizzazz for the lighter portion of the green and um, garden green for the darker. And I'm actually going to want to start a little lower when I do these greens. I probably could do old olive actually. Um, because you don't want to do too much too dark at the top. You can, work, you can always work your way up. You can't take the color away, but you can always add to it. So anyways, just wanted to talk about that highlight portion and I'm going to go ahead and finish coloring Tommy and Tina. So now we've got Tommy and Tina all cut out and ready to go. We'll be putting dimensionals on them in a few moments when it's ready to put the card together. Now we're going to want to assemble a portion of the card. So it is safe to, at this point, glue your bottom mat to your card base. Get that all good and stuck down there. Okay. I love that texture. Um, and I believe that this was, um, that this is the, I believe it's the decorative dots embossing folder. I've already ran that through for time's sake. Um, and then what you're going to want to do is your, your lovely piece that you've made with the modeled colors, you're going to want to adhere that to its mat, the garden green mat. Just like so. Oh, it fits so nicely. Okay, and then what I've done on the original card was I put Baker's twine. Now this is retired now, but um, if you can find something similar, I know that we have some, some very natural type twine that we sell um, that would work lovely. For this one what I do is I kind of eyeball about how much I'll need on each side, that much with some extra so that I can stick it to the back. Okay, 
for my two pieces. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my snail. I put a little adhesive on the back portion of the card so that it gives my twine something to stick to while I position it on the front where I want it. So I just kind of put that there. Kind of crisscross it a little bit. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and put the second one on the top like so. And then from there you can kind of see about where you want it. Now I try to make the where it crosses over, you can always readjust it and that is another reason why I put the um, that this type of adhesive on the back, the snail on the back, so that you can reposition as you need to. I kind of want the crossover point to be either in the middle or just a little higher than the middle. Alright, so that's down and to keep it held down really well, I just go ahead and stick it down with some regular tape. And it just kind of gives it a better anchor so that it doesn't come loose. And burnish that down. You could even cut off the excess so it takes weight and bulk off of your card. Alright, so now that I've got that, um, we want to put dimensionals on the back. Alright, so we've removed the backing off of the dimensionals. And now we're going to place it on the card. Boy, doesn't that already look lovely? I really like the way that this um, turned out, this technique on this particular one is really, it's kind of soft, but there's like a lot of bubble looking stuff going on right there. I'm putting dimensionals on the back of my turtles so that it'll give them lots of room to swim. But, um, now we're going to stamp the main sentiment and I had stamped mine in garden green using the happy birthday stamp from the wetland set. Okay, so just go ahead and stamp that. Oh, it turned out nice. And using my large oval punch, I just go ahead and center that out. Punch it out. That looks really good. All right, so from there I will take my sponge again, the same one had the um, excuse me the pear pizzazz on it, and I'm going to just ink the edges so it's not such such a stark contrast between the white and the background. It kind of helps kind of helps blend everything together. And dimensionals on the back of this and what I'm going to want to do is because I want it to sit over my twine in such a way um, I'm actually putting a dimensional way over on this one side and then way over on this other side to obviously give it support on the edges and then now I know I'm going to want <clears throat> I'm going to want it to sit kind of offset, not it won't be centered, it's going to be offset a little bit. So from there I'm just going to kind of put another dimensional, not all the way in the center, but a little more over to one side, if you can see that. And take off the backing, otherwise it won't stick. to be about right there. Looks good. And then I take Tommy and Tina, whose dimensional backings I have already removed. And I'm going to find where I want to place them. To, <laughs> they they want to go. Um, so that it fills out the card nicely. If I just drop them down a little bit, they don't stick too well. And I'm going to place Tina. She's going to sit a little bit off the matting right there. And Tommy will be here going a little more straight, leading the way. There we go. 
All right, and so um, looks pretty good just like that, but for finishing touch, I am adding some wonderful white perfect accents that look just like little drops of water or bubbles. And I'm using two small, one medium. Just putting one here. small one there okay and really that that is it but there is one other thing that I did add that might be kind of hard to see is I took my um, my clear wink of Stella glimmer brush pen which I absolutely adore is the best invention ever since microwave ovens um, and with this one, I, I gave a very, very light brush of shimmer right on the top of their shells, a little bit on their head, and a little bit on their fins. Not a lot. It's where you almost can't even see it, unless you're really looking. And it just kind of finishes it off. And um, when I was done with this, I was super pleased with myself because it really was not that difficult. It didn't take a whole lot of steps. Um, the technique that I showed you today is super fun and it's very easy and it gives a really a very much of a wow appearance. And I like the card and I hope you do too. And I hope you liked my very first video of all time and uh, hope to see you back again soon.